Lamelo Ball drives to the basket, but gets tripped up and falls on his right hand. Although he would continue to play, doing almost everything on the court exclusively with his left, after the game the diagnosis came out to be a season-ending fracture, confirming the worst fears for the Hornets franchise. Lamelo is the latest high-profile player to get injured and miss a significant portion of the season, after Anthony Davis, Joel Embiid and LeBron James of course. Let me explain how this changes the landscape for awards such as Rookie of the Year, MVP and the Most Improved Player as well and why this is the nightmare scenario for the NBA. What up everybody, my name is Stefan and this is Heat Check. Let's get into it. Let's start off with the MVP situation. The LeBron James media mafia kept mentioning him and building his case and pushing the narrative for the king as a serious candidate even though there are a lot of players just as deserving if not more than him this season. The campaign grew even stronger after Joel Embiid got injured, completely disregarding players like Jokic who is averaging a damn near triple double, all that while being within three games of LeBron's Lakers, or Damian Lillard who has been been holding this Blazers team with duct tape from falling apart after injuries to both Nurkic and CJ McCollum at the start of the season, also with the same record as the Nuggets. And I have to mention the reigning MVP Giannis, who's been on fire lately, leading the Bucks to 11 wins in their last 12 games. So now the plot thickens. I cannot remember the last time that the MVP race has been this wide open and all of these injuries could have huge implications. For example, the next few games for the Lakers are looking scary. Even the Magic look like the favorites against this remaining LA roster. By the time LeBron gets back, how far will they fall in the standings? One important thing to keep an eye on in this whole situation is the fact that James has a miraculous record when it comes to ankle injuries. Throughout his career, there have been 8 times where he injured his ankle and he missed a grand total of only three games before this one. So I don't know, the fact that he was able to at least play a bit more after the injury and given the situation that the Lakers are in, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets back on the court sooner rather than later and with that continue his pursuit for the MVP. And the latest news on Embiid from the always reliable Shams Sharania is that Joel is feeling much better than expected in these first few days from his injury. So he might also push to come back in a Sixers uniform. So Shams, what's the latest on Embiid and how long do you expect him to be out? Yeah, a major side relief for Joel Embiid, the Sixers. He's had an MVP season and when he went down, you had fears of ACL, meniscus. You know, that is the level of fear that Philadelphia had. But thankfully, the MRI came back and it was just a bone bruise. And I'm told Joel Embiid is actually feeling a lot better than he expected in the first few days of this injury. I would not be surprised if he's really pushing that two-week timetable and might even be able to come back earlier. But for his sake, for the remainder of the season, he needs to be sure that he's 100%. But the people at the NBA office are sort of biting their nails watching this as they definitely wouldn't want their superstars to rush things and get back too early to a point where they possibly re-aggravate their injuries just in time for the playoffs, when it matters the most of course. So although Adam Silver and company are happy that a lot of players are performing at a high level and the race for the most viable player is competitive, the injuries of the elites such as Braun, AD and Joel are making things extremely scary for them. The thought of a conference finals between the Jazz and the Nuggets, for example, is suicidal for the TV ratings, as much as a basketball purist like me would love that to happen. And they'll never admit this, but having the Lakers be in it at the end is what the league wants and needs. And for that to happen, both LeBron and Anthony Davis have to be healthy come playoff time. With all that being said, however, there is a real possibility that these top two MVP candidates miss a lot of time in the regular season and the award to be won by another player as a partial consequence of the injuries. Which leads us to the Rookie of the Year debate, where if everything stays the same, it's almost definitive now that Anthony Edwards is the favorite to win it solely as a result of the Lamelo Ball injury. Check this out. They have been neck and neck when it comes to scoring throughout the entire season, however, Ball has been outstanding with his 6 assists per game, helping get Charlotte in the playoff picture when nobody could even dream about it happening. So there was no doubt up until this point who's been the best rookie. However, missing almost half of the remaining season removes a player from the conversation almost by default. 
Guys like Tyrese Halliburton, who I really love, and Emmanuel Quickly, who I've already made a video about, are now all of a sudden also in the Rookie of the Year debate, alongside James Wiseman. But again, if you give truth serum to some of the lead guys in the NBA offices, they'll admit that the ideal scenario would be for a flashy guy like Lamelo to win it, all while transforming a losing franchise into a playoff team. And when you compare the Hornets record to the one of Minnesota, the dead last team in the league, you have to understand and agree with that preference. One underrated injury that might end up deciding another award at the end of the season is Christian Wood and the most improved player of the year. Wood made a huge leap from last season, going from 13 and 6 all the way to a double-double of 22 and 10 per game. And the fact that he was a relatively unknown player up until this season, I feel like gave him an edge over Jeremy Grant, who also made a big leap this year. However, Christian has missed 21 games due to injury and in a shortened season such as this one, that's a lot and I believe that this could be a deciding factor for this award at the end of the season. So that makes it three important categories that could potentially be decided by injuries. Definitely not ideal for the league and whatever happens and whoever ends up winning these awards, let's just hope that ultimately all players can get back on the court healthy and playing their best basketball again. Let me know in the comments who's your pick for the NBA awards. That's it for now. Subscribe and talk to you in the next one. Peace out. Bang! Let's go, baby. It's the turtleneck, baby. It's the turtleneck, boy.